Hey guys, welcome to the Traditional Bowhunting Wilderness Podcast. This is Jason Samkovic. Today we're going to talk about the three most important, in my opinion, our first knives from SE that you should start with. These three knives will cover pretty much everything. I know a couple of you guys don't care much for the knife videos, but a lot of you guys like them, and I, I love knives. So we're going to talk about it first. So if you, SE has a lot of knives. Tops makes a lot of great knives. Those are my two, one of my two favorite manufactured knife makers out there are those two. That's pretty much all I buy anymore. Um, but when it comes to SE, there are three that I think are the most important that you should focus on. Two of them being ones that you'll use quite often. The other one, depending on who you are, may be a valuable as one too. But the first one, you've seen my other videos on it too, and that is the SE Azula. That is this one right here. This is the little SE Azula that you see. I'll make sure you focus on it there. I think you can um, right in there. But that is that SE Azula right here. This little knife. Um, absolutely incredible. The size of it is perfect. Uh, it, I mean, there's so many things you can do with this, and it's so compact and lightweight. Uh, it does come with its own sheath. You can get it with a clip uh, kit that clips, so you can clip it anywhere you want and lock it on you real easy. Um, this sheath is incredible. Um, I've actually modified my first one. What I did is I actually ground it down. You can see it right here. I'll pop it off and show it to you. Um, you can see the difference in size of that sheath versus that one. It is actually the same exact sheath. What I did is I took this out on my grinding wheel and uh, with a Dremel I cut the edges of it off and then just cleaned it up with my with a, on my be uh, be bench grinder, sorry. But cleaned it up on my bench grinder so it's just a little more compact and simple in design since I carry it on a dangler in my pocket. So, But this SC Azula knife that you have on here, um, just it is the perfect size. It is built with SE quality has Rowan heat treat, which is one of the best heat treat systems out there. It's absolutely phenomenal. Um, it is made out of 1095 carbon. All of these are, and I love 10, 1095. It's one of my favorite knife materials. It doesn't hold an edge as well as some of the super steels that are out there, but it has other advantages in my, my opinion that it's predictable as far as uh, its strength and resistance to breaking. Um, so I really like that. I've never broken an SE knife and I use them all the time. I have broken a lot of other knives. I've broken the tips off of them. I've broken blades in half. I beat a lot of knives and a lot of them being very high-end steel. Um, SE has never given me a problem before with any of theirs. And they do have, I think, I'm pretty sure a lifetime warranty. So even if they were, but the warranty is irrelevant if you're out somewhere and you don't have the option of another knife. So the SE Azula absolutely incredible knife um, i do wish they would make it in an uncoated version because mine i uncoat them this is a brand new one it's never been used it's one of my spares um, that i have never like i said never used it um, but my azula that i use this is my first one i ever bought first or second one i can't remember which but i've been carrying this thing for about 12 years now in my pocket every day i run a patina on it but if you look at that versus this one you can see how much smaller and narrower my blade is that is because of the fact that I've been using it for so many years and sharpening it that it's actually, you know, it's worn down some. But this knife is just incredible. It's always on my side. I, I use it for things I never should because it's the one I have it handy with. And it's held up incredible. So the SC Azula is a fantastic knife. Like I said, I've done other videos on this. Um, how to strip them down, how to put a patina on them. I've done all kinds of things uh, for you to show you all about this. But that knife, number one, for sure. That knife is just... You you cannot beat it especially for the price i'll have links for these down below for you but this knife is in my opinion the most valuable knife that's ever been made a lot of you guys will argue with me that for that i i understand that and it's all personal preference but for me i have yet to find a knife that beats this for an everyday carry knife for a skinning knife for a uh you know working on animals knife for an everything knife it is just nearly impossible in my opinion to beat uh, the multifunctionality, durability, quality, and, and value you get out of an SE Azula. That knife is number one, in my opinion. Um, like I said, this one being my, my personal, you know, my everyday one, and I carry it right on a dangler. I've shown you this in other videos as well, too. But mine just sits. I put It's a piece of paracord that I took the guts out of. So it's just an empty piece of paracord. I take that each morning when I get up, and I put on my belt. I just take that, and I fish it right over itself. Just like that, so it's really easy to come on and off, and it just hangs in my pocket. But all the weight is on my belt, so I don't feel anything. So you'll always see that everywhere I am, you're always going to see this string on me. Because that way I can just hook my hand on it, life comes out, goes right into my hand, and I have it right there. So I use it religiously. 
And for every time you'll ever see me, you'll always see that string dangling. That's my SE Azula knife that I'm carrying. Um, so that one, number one, is that Azula. Next up is a knife that we're all going to need and that fits that size is going to be the SE number four. The SG3 is a great one too, but I do not like how thin the blade design is on the three quite as much. Is it a great knife for a lot of great things? You bet it is. But when I want that that mid-range, I want that, that bushcraft survival kind of knife, I want that do-it-all kind of knife, and that's where that SE number four fits into. If you look at the size versus that SE Azula, you can see there size-wise, um, you know, a little bit different size, obviously, but that four with the choil, which is this part right here, that lets you hold it like a regular knife and you have a good four inch blade like that, or you can choke up on that and get right in there, or even for working animals, you can still get right up in there and have all that grip on there and work those, you know, for, for field dressing and for things like that, but, uh, or for fine tune work, you can choke right up on that blade, real nice and tight where you can see that there, and you can really work and build traps. Uh, and do things with it, yet it's strong enough to be able to do some some shelter building, feather sticks to you know you can baton it, you can you can beat it. It's an SE and it's made out of 1095 and it's designed to take it. There are videos in there out there where guys have stuck this thing that far into a tree and they've actually hung from it and beat on it and tried everything and you can't. They're just they hold up incredible. SE knives are just top notch knives. This one, if you notice, is actually called an RC4. This is actually I've had this one since before SE was SE. Back when SE was rat cutlery. That's how old this Rowan heat treated SE knife is. Uh, that's why I have I've never used this one. This is exactly how it looks as it comes from the factory. Never been used. It's actually my spare one. Um, this one is my SE number four that I use all the time. Again, completely stripped, patinaed. Um, I actually put a, I did file a notch or put that on my sander there and sanded that flat so I can use it to strike a ferro rod if I want to. Not that I ever do that anymore. I actually prefer to just do it right off the lower part of the blade. It doesn't hurt them. And, you know, I know there's a lot of people out there and a lot of knife gurus and wilderness survival gurus that say, oh, don't ever do that. You're going to ruin your blade. To use that little bitty speck on a, on a, on a ferro rod to light that, I don't use that part of the knife for anything anyway. So it's irrelevant. So for me, um, I originally did this. I wouldn't do it again. I, I don't need to. I prefer to just light it right off that bottom part of that blade right back here that I don't use for anything anyway. So, um, but that's my modified SE number four. And I use this knife on, I mean, this thing gets, you know, it gets five patinas a year. Um, I use it a lot. It's held up incredible. This thing is, it actually, these scales were actually desert tan when I bought this. That's the color they were. This thing has just been uh, used for everything. And it makes a great uh, bushcraft knife, great survival knife, a great do-it-all knife, a great only carry in one knife. Like I said, small enough to work animals over, big enough to be able to do most of your chores and do everything. This is an ultimate do everything kind of knife. This is my absolute favorite of every single knife I own, which is almost a hundred different knife models. This one here is my number one favorite. If I could only grab one knife and had to walk out with it, this would be the one that I would go with because you can do everything with it. Uh, again, like I said, you can see here, mine, again, how much has been used. Look at the shape of that. Look at how much my blade has been worn down compared to what an original is. And that's, again, because I use it so much. This knife has been incredible. It is very lightweight, very simple. It's just a fantastic uh, knife. I don't have the sheath that they come with because I make my own for them, so I don't have one to show you. I, I make all my own style. I've done videos on this too, why I have that. I set up as a dangler so I can put that right on my belt just like that and have it anytime I need to use it. I can strap it uh, and carry it horizontal carry like this, or I mean vertical carry. I can also take and run this horizontal carry. I can do anything I want to with it. I can strap it on a pack. I, that's how I make all my sheaths are done is this exact same way. It's all personal preference, but I build my own that way on purpose. Um, so, but this is that SE number four. Another fantastic, like I said, kind of the ultimate jack of all trades knife as far as SE lineup goes. And as far as any knife goes, like I said, I got almost a hundred. If you t told me I had to just grab one and go, this would be my knife I would take for anything. Now, those are the two that are most commonly going to be ones you're going to use. This one, everyday carry, 99% of your hunting tasks, 99% of your chores, opening boxes, everything you can think of, this is going to do most of that. 
this one kind of in my opinion the ultimate outdoors knife taking it a step bigger than this because this can't do everything um you know because of the size of the blade this one gets you into the capabilities of batoning which i know a lot of people are against and don't think it works but you know what sometimes it's easier um and this knife can take it that's the beauty of it i i, I when people say oh you should never do that with a knife it's the tool I have on me, and I want to do it with that knife sometimes, and this one will let you do that. So, um, fantastic. The SE4, incredible. Another great one, SE number 6. Now, if you look at the size, big difference from the 4 to the 6. Now, mine has got custom scales on it. I don't think I would, I don't know if I would buy those again. They're definitely nice, but they add a little bit more weight to it. The original scales um, fit my hand comfortably, and they work good, so I don't know if I would do that. But when I ordered this, um, I had it ordered with these scales on there. I do like them, um, but I don't, I'm not really convinced that they're that big of a difference to make it worthwhile to get them. Um, and like I said, they do add a little more weight, but they are still a great option. Any of these, you can get custom scales for any of those. You can get scales for this Azula um, to put handles on it. You know, you can, any of them can, so many options for SE scales. Um, but this number six, this is kind of the ultimate survival knife, in my opinion. Again, you have that choil on there, just like you have on that number four. So it lets you choke. You know, you can use it like a knife here, but you can really choke up and do that fine detail work. Watch the difference in my hand from here, and imagine if I'm working sticks. See how I have all the, I don't have the leverage because I'm going to be working right here just like this. I don't have that capability because of how far my hand is to the material I'm working on. With that choil, I can choke up into here, grab here, get my hand up on the back of this blade, and really control that knife for a lot of stuff I'm doing. Gives It takes this big six-inch blade and turns it into a very usable knife for a lot of very delicate chores. Still, the blade design, you could still use this to work animals over if you needed to and be able to uh, um, skin them, gut them, and, and do any of the meat processing you need. Just a fantastic, awesome kind of survival knife. Shelter building, this thing it rocks at it. You cannot, be, you cannot hurt this knife. It's absolutely incredible. So, great knife. It has great jimping on the back of it right here, too, as all the SEs do. So you got that little bit of a thumb groove for on there for when you are choked up on there to be able to use even the SE Azula. The little one has that jimping on there too. So you can get right up on there. It gives you a good bite on your thumb. Um, again, I take the coating off of this. Now on this six, I only took, I left it on the handle part. I left it here just because it doesn't hurt nothing and it doesn't get beat up. I don't like the actual coatings that are on these knives. I don't care for this coating on here it sticks it's not that i take it off because it looks bad because i don't really care what it looks like um but i don't like how it sticks when you're using it so i prefer to have them unfinished um like this so i do I, and again i have videos on how to do that how to strip that and put a patina on it this patina that you see on these knives is just as good as any coating you're going to have on there. They will prevent all rust from happening. They last for a very long time on there. They're quick and easy to make with a vinegar patina. So very simple to do. Um, but this SE6, like I said, another great version. This is a great, this is kind of the workhorse um, of knives. This will do everything you can imagine from shelter building to split and firewood to, you know, all the things you need around camp. And that's where I usually use this one as a camp and shelter building kind of a knife, survival type knife setups. This one here, this six, uh, fits that build perfectly and comes in real handy for it. That four, everything, do it all, jack of all trades knife. And that Azula, Everybody should own one of these. I think as soon as you turn 18, uh, this should be mandatory that the government should give you one of these because that's how good of a knife this is. Everybody should have an Azula. Um, but if you're looking for Essies, which are incredible, they're my favorite knife brand out there by far, um, you can't go wrong with one of these three. And actually, if you're going to start building them, these would be the three I would go to. I would start with that Azula because it will be the one you use every single day. Move up to the SE4 because it will then fit the bill for everything else you want to do. And it's easy to carry, very simple, very lightweight. It uh, doesn't take up much space in your pack or to have on you, but you will carry this. And then when you start getting more serious about some of that, some of the shelter building, survival skills, some of that kind of stuff, need something bigger, that's where that SE number 6 comes in very handy. There's very few things out there that you cannot do 
with this knife. This knife will do everything. And with that blade design, you, there's a lot of stuff you can do with this that you could even still do with this. So it gives you a lot of versatility. Um, and with the choils on them and the way you can choke those right up, I mean, they make for a very powerful knife to be able to do what you want with and work them well and use them the right way. I mean, they're just incredible. So there you go. If you're looking for Essie's, those are my top three that I think you should start out with. They're, the other Essies are fantastic too. We have almost every single one of them. I don't. I think the one I don't have is a Laser Strike, and I do not have a Hungalese. Um, those are the two I don't think I got. But these are absolutely incredible. You cannot beat these three. If, if these are are my highly recommended ones. So thanks for watching. All right.